Hi, hi everybody. Thanks for joining me today on this Friday in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. I hope you're all as excited as I am about our three guests joining me today. These fun and talented actors worked together at WSBR, caused some good trouble in Springfield during their time there, and have remained friends over the years. Please welcome to the locker room, Maureen Garrett, Holly, uh, Holly Lindsay, sorry, Rick Hurst, Alan Michael Spaulding, Amelia Marshall, Julie Grant. Maureen, Amelia, and Rick. Hi, everybody. Uh, hi, everyone. Holly, Nor Holly Norris, Lindsay, right? It, it, it is Lindsay, right? Holly Lindsay? What? Yes, you just remind me of that. That was my maiden name, I do believe. Or no, no, no. I think that was a, a first marriage. Yeah. yeah. Oh, because I, yeah. The, uh, Norris. I got Norris confused because I know time. Norris was. Yeah. Norris is your maiden name, right? right. And then Lindsay, it was a Wolfgang. I think in one of my breakdowns, I went to Austria and met Wolfgang. On <laughs> 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 camera. Only in daytime. Yes, well, exactly. Let, let's, let me tell everybody, um, Rick is working. He's working in his family's restaurant, so hopefully he'll be with us the whole show. Yes. Maureen Garrett is in Sonoma County in, in California and is oh, on nice. evacuation watch. So she oh could be, God. she might have to evacuate, which we pray to God not. But uh, Maureen, actually tell us about that. Cause I know you, ha you had to evacuate and you just got back there, you were telling me. Yes, just got back to Sonoma after evacuating earlier in the week. We thought the um, AQI, our air quality index had been improved. Um, Luckily, we're on the other side of the mountain from the fires where they're raging. But we're, I don't know if you can see, but we're right here and this is the evacuation zone. So um, we, we're half a mile from an evacuation zone. We could get called at any time, which is why I didn't sleep last night in addition to the news. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been chasing, I've been running from wildfires for the past two months, actually. I oh my God. run up to Washington, where I also live, and then, but I always want to get back to here because we have um, started this food forest here, and there are all these wonderful little fruit trees and uh, super berries that I want to tend to, and, um, but now we're, now the fires are down here, so I'm, you know, I have my smoke mask, different from my COVID mask, and uh, we have our bags packed and we're ready to go at all times. You know, earthquakes have always scared me. Like I, you know, I've never lived in California. So I can't, you know, that's always been something. I couldn't imagine having to run from a wildfire. That's like just something that sounds so far. And I think Amelia, I mean, on the East Coast, it's not something we ever hear of. Rick on the East Coast, we don't hear of that. I've experienced them and it's, you know, I, I had not, not to the extent that the fires are raging in California now, but when I lived there, I lived in the Santa Clarita Valley. So we were, it was a very common occurrence to like be driving home from work and like, oh, look, the fire's on that side of the freeway today. Maybe it won't jump and come to my house. I mean, it, it, it was, but it, that being said, they have built green belts and all this kind of like fire retardant kind of uh, plans for the vegetation there. But it's, it's insane right now. It's just because it's so warm. Right. It's in the same with me, San Fernando Valley. And I remember being in the valley and looking around and there were fires on all the mountain ridges and yeah. the smoke just poured down. And literally we didn't have to evacuate. But, you know, you were talking about air quality, Maureen. We you had to wear a mask inside the house because we just sat there in, in a bowl collecting all the smoke and haze from all of those fires. It's it's awful it really is it, it it brings it all home and i know you're just absolutely um restless with with this need to move continually yes but on the other hand you think i just can't keep running i think i'm just gonna hunker down and stay in one spot we have uh, air purifiers in all the rooms and we have an oxygen uh thing that you stick up your nose like remember when we yeah. had like hospital seats <laughs> yes. we live with this, we live with this. Um, I mean unless there's unless there's the possibility of it being structural and it coming and taking god forbid taking that yeah. 
Yeah. You gotta, yeah. In that case, you, you, one wants to get, and I mean, so many people have just been burned out, and it is uh, devastating. It's devastating. Shell I feel. I feel like. I feel like just across the board between. I mean, poor thing. You're having to like dash for cover. It's like we're all shell shocked from like what? What next? We have to you know yeah. watch. Yeah. Everything. What? What's the next big thing? Yeah, I right. couldn't. I mean, no wonder you didn't sleep. I. I. I mean. I don't sleep for just a normal, you know, thinking of, you know, the show, let's say <laughs> like, like that would really do me, you know, I, I probably would never close my eyes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. I, I always do that. I never sleep before any sort of uh, big thing, like an interview with Alan and, and Rick and Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> um, more, uh, Maureen, you're getting a big, big hug from Italy because I know that John just said he was from Italy. So. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and uh, Nancy Watts and option. Jolori Hurst say hello to all of you. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Nancy. Love them both. Oh, <laughs> they say a big hello. Um, Amelia, because I think Rick and Maureen had shared this before, but I may ask them again. What do you remember about your first day in Springfield? Um, and I, I said this last time, Locke Wallace, Locke uh -huh. Wallace, the stage manager, he, um, because I was playing the stage manager, he took me under his wing and I felt very confident. <laughs> I sing. felt like I was getting the best support. And I, I know, I remember Bruce was the director, I believe, that day. Uh -huh. I, I, I'm pretty sure. And I just remember feeling super comfortable and supported and feeling like I was in a company of actors. I, I A couple years before, I was on for three days on One Life to Live, and I felt like people were gunning for me. <laughs> and, you know, stage managers and all. And that was just not the feeling that first day. I felt like I, this is home. I could be really, really happy here. And I was. <laughs> were, were you given a contract right out of the gate or were you? Um, no. So you, didn't have, so you didn't have to screen test. Oh, right. You actually, right. I, I was reading that. Yes. You were given a contract like very quickly though, right? maybe a year and a half or so. Oh, I thought it was okay. No, um, I started working like I was a contract player, which made me really, really happy. But okay. no, it was, a, I want to say it was about a year and a half. Um, I, I did. I thought it was going to be another one of those short run things that, you know, oh, I'm here because they've got a need for this television studio. And once that need is done, I'll be back on the unemployment line. But, you know, it really turned out so beautifully. <laughs> yeah. And was Maureen in your your first scenes since it was WSPR? I um I remember talking with Nadine. No, 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 no. I can't remember that. Isn't that odd? Okay. Did, was I? Were you? No, it's, it's, it's one or two years ago. It's only one or two years ago. <laughs> You Life know. hasn't happened since then. <laughs> I couldn't remember what I wanted when I went into the pantry this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, let, let's talk about the pantry. You're wearing yeah. you're wearing your apron. What what are you making for My folks apron. today? <laughs> what are oh, you wearing oh, for folks today? Uh, oh well, it's a lovely it's a lovely uh, sort of denim style apron. It wraps around the front and the back. That's just a little bit more because as we as we are all in years, we, we have to make sure that we have a little bit of a room, as we say. Um, yeah. yeah, that's where we're at. With that. um, uh, not, so, nothing yeah, better than room. a family business. Nothing better than a family business. No, it's great. I mean, you know, I laugh because I used to have this. And this sounds funny, and I told this to my mother the other day, where she was like, she said, really? And I said, I, I used to dream of having a pizzeria, like having my own pizzeria. I thought that was just such a, the, the idea of the simplicity of it, uh, the, the fact that it's communal and you're always 
you know, yeah. you guys know me. I'm always, I was always like in somebody's restaurant. Like, hey, how you doing? What's going on? I was like, yeah, I'm out of here, Welcome. Stop bugging us. Um, I haven't changed. Um, <laughs> but, um, Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, but I, I, you know, that was something that I, I, I always wanted, and we started this business about four years ago, really on a whim, and just to see, well, let's see if somebody wants some sauce. And now we're, we're. It's not a restaurant. We actually we do. Um, we do frozen entrees, but that's all authentic, rustic, you know, uh, home sale Italian. Um, I'm working on actually, um, we've applied for USDA approval so that we could potentially get our food all over the country. Oh, so, wow. oh that's great. Yeah. So today I'm making pizzas. I've, I've become in love, obviously, with pizza. So I'm making uh, Neapolitan pizzas today. I make the shells. I make the, you know, the sauce. We put fresh cheese that we get from New Jersey. Everything I get from Jersey. Everything gets oh. from, from, from <laughs> my state. My state. No. Uh, pizzeria is where I used to hang out, like in high school. Like that was on the way home. We all hung out yeah. at the pizzeria. It's where my parents met. I mean, my mom used to go into the pizzeria that my father used to work in. Um, so it's kind of I don't know. I mean, she always says that I'm channeling my dad for this, but <laughs> it is. It's enjoyable. It's hardest work, I gotta say. Oh my god. I think we've. I don't know, Maureen, if you ever worked in, in a restaurant, but I think Amelia, you you worked in a restaurant before, yes or no? You just went um, in commercials and started making money as an actor. You were smart. <laughs> no, um, during college, I, I, I hosted hosted at a restaurant, and I begged the um, manager to allow me to waitress because mm -hmm. I wanted to make tips before going back for my senior year in college. And um, somehow or the other, I ended up um, grabbing a glass um, salad dressing container, and it cracked in my hand and sliced oh. my thumb. And well, I was in such shock. I walked out of the refrigerated area at the restaurant into the restaurant, holding up my dripping thumb. <laughs> as people <Yeah>. scatter. Yeah. <laughs> you much. might as well have said rot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is that in my salad? No, it's not in your salad. <laughs> and that was the end of my restaurant career. It really was. <laughs> That that is so funny. Um, one of our fans is asking, what was the reason um, the Alan Michael and Jilly potential relationship was cut short? Does do either of you know? I I you know it, it was one of those things where, and I thought about this this morning because I knew that we were going to be you know yeah. talking about it, and, and I I just I never thought it was something that's like. Oh, that's a big thing in interracial relationship. It's like, what's you know, what was the big deal? I, I felt like we we tackled things that were far more you know controversial uh, on, on Guiding Light then than than uh, than something as, as as minuscule as that. But you know, we were still. I think we were still very much. You know, it's a it was a very kind of a whitewashed business. Wow, you really, you do think that in the 90s it was still because it was Absolutely. interracial? I don't know. What do you think? Wow. Really I, I, I think it was twofold. I think that, I don't think that they planned on us having chemistry. And of course, no. that was all Rick because I had to watch oh. Rick at every no. moment in a no, scene. Ma it was so in the hotel room, right? We were, on, like, investigating, we were investigating the recording. We were out in a hotel room and all. Yeah, no, that whole thing. I absolutely. I don't. I don't think the writers intended that there was chemistry. No, they didn't. But, but they didn't. we loved. I. I think we loved working with each other. Yeah. Yes. But I, I adored working. In, I adored working the, with everybody there, but I, I did. It was fantastic. Because you, it was just fun. We had such, um, my God, I, I always say this, we had such an incredible cast and it was kind of hard not to have chemistry with all these people that you work with. But I think in the long term, they had a different plan down the pipeline mm -hmm. for Alan Michael. And mm -hmm. so as a yeah. As the fans maybe were responding to the chemistry, they were like, "No, no, 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 no! We're bringing in somebody for him. We can't do this right now." Right, and right, I, right. I but plans change. That's the thing. It's like you always go, "Well, plans change." You know, you're bringing in somebody, but oh my gosh, you know, oopsie, there you go. I mean, let's be honest, Maureen. Uh, you know, having your character fall in love with your your rapist, it was not a you know like, oh, let's just. I mean, that was planned. I, I imagine or no. How did that, the whole thing with, with uh, Michael, with Roger? 
In interesting. One of our uh, people tuning in, one of our fans said, um, interracial was a big deal. This person interned on Guiding Light, and while he, he, he or she was at Guiding Light, they got a phone call about As the World Turns, where there was an interracial couple, Tamara Tooney and Michael Tamara Strong. Tooney, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, yeah. and they were, uh, somebody was complaining. Well, that's really sad because that's, you know, we'll, we'll talk, that's awful. And, but uh, wow, I, I had no idea. Um, Maureen, somebody said you are ageless. Boy, are you. I'm telling you, girl. I know. I agree. She, uh, I'm, get, I'm all older, of you people are commenting I'm how you. Older. I'm not supposed to say older, but I was born before everybody else. So. <laughs> <laughs> a different you you lead a healthy life did, so did you and amelia hit it off as well right oh, away because I, I totally, totally loved totally. her from day one not that i can remember day one but <laughs> <laughs> but there was you know i i think we had so much fun as well there was never a a, a time when i didn't look forward to it and we were you know good buddies off screen as well um and i just do you remember I, this wait i'm laughing too hard did you just explain what that was about yeah <laughs> she did it went on in the scene mm -hmm. forever it felt like <laughs> That, oh my that God, I so, thought about that. That is so funny. It's, it's that is so funny. funny. And Alan, you know, we didn't, unlike nowadays where editing is really, really easy, we didn't stop. We didn't cut. We didn't do all right. of those things. So we kind of had to take care of each other. You know, right. we had right. to say, hey, you got lipstick on your teeth. You got, we had to have these signals to oh. each other so that we could get through a scene without having, having to stop the camera roll. Right. <laughs> Unless it was just really bad and then you say the bad word and then everything comes yes. to us. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. You, you have another hello from Alex Johnson, everybody. Big hello. Oh, hi. Hi, <laughs> hi Alex. <laughs> uh, Maureen, so, somebody had a good question. Michael had a question. He said, when you play your mother on a show, does it carry over in real life? Like, were, were you and Sherry close? Were you, in, I think you and Liz were pretty, Pretty darn close. Yes, all of them. Liz Dennehy. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course. I mean, I have kind of a a mama thing, you know, to all the young ones since I was born earlier than everybody else. <laughs> uh, they were all like, you know, I was very fond. Can you can you talk about the differences between those three ladies? How would you describe each? Gosh. Well, let's see. First when I came in, it, it was Liz Dennehy, right? Yeah. And um, oh, we we just, we got along so well. We, I, I remember being over at her apartment, this funny duplex thing. And uh, we, I mean, we felt more like sisters, really. Actually, most of them, I felt, because of the casting, I felt really more like sisters to them. Oh, big sisters. Um, and I grew up with a big sister, so that was very familiar to me. Um, then let's see. Uh, oh, then Sherry Stringfield. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Gosh, that she was just wonderful. Such a great sense of humor. I actually oh, yeah. gave her a bracelet. She this very bracelet. She liked it, and I gave her one like that when she left the show. Oh. Um, uh, and. Uh, Oh, great, great sense. The senses of humor is what bind you to everybody on these shows, you know, because of, with all of the tension and the pressure, uh, you've got to laugh or you will explode. It's kind of like current life, only more so. Now it's a little, reality is a little more intense. Now we need laughter a lot more now than we ever Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. And Liz, Liz Keeper, uh, just darling, still to this day. That's awesome. And Rick, did you work with, I know you started with Sherry. Did you get time with Liz as well? 
Oh, absolutely. I actually, yeah. I want to say I had almost equal time with both. Um, cause Sherry, I want to say Sherry left in the middle of my first contract and she left probably two years in. I started in 91 and I think she left in 93 and that's when, when Liz came on. Um, yeah. And just totally like, like Maureen said, it's totally different energies. Sherry, I have a funny story about Sherry and, <laughs> and I, I, because Sherry, Sherry was a, I mean, she's very young. Um, but, but sort of had carried herself like didn't somebody who was, started who was much interrupt. Didn't Sherry, I think, I feel like I remember Sherry got guiding light right out of college. She did. She went to, she was yeah. in purchase. Yeah. 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 I, I, I purchased. Like she, yeah. She was 23 when wow. she was, when she left and went and got NYPD blue after that. And then, um, um, uh, ER obviously. Um, but yeah, she was, she was very young, but carried herself much more, uh, let's, let's say experienced and, and worldly, you know what I mean? She really, it, it, I, she's a great bro. She just was like, I <laughs> love hanging with Sherry. We were tight. We were buddies. We had such a good time. Uh, she was, I, you know, I mean, you say, I have no reason, but I'll tell you working with, with Sherry, when I did my screen test to get the part, that was the reason she was just totally open for whatever, always. Uh, we used to do these little things like before scenes, he's like, give me some chicken. Uh, it was, it was just really <laughs> fun. But anyway, the story real quick, real quick. Um, so, uh, I was a brand new dad. Um, uh, Sherry, uh, says, I got to take your wife after a year and a half. Um, I think it was, yes. Um, no, six months in Donna had not been out. She was, you know, literally breastfeeding the entire time and staying home and I've come and she'd be in the same clothes and she's like, oh, help me. So Sherry says, I'm taking your wife out. I'm like, oh shit. Okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, so I, I, of course, I was with the baby. It was with Nick that night. And she, at about two in the morning, now I, 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 had, I, I can't remember if it was, we were like on pagers or, oh, she had called and said, I'm fine, I'm fine. She did. They, they went to a place uh, on 16th Street, it was a little hole in the wall Mexican place, sort of bottomless margaritas, and so. Oh my God, Marianne's! No, it was. No, it wasn't Marianne's. It began with a C. Uh, Marianne's 16th, was upper, upper. 16th and what? 16th and 8th, I think. That was, was Marianne's. Oh, yeah, okay. But maybe maybe maybe, maybe, it that one. maybe it was maybe it was something else. You know, but yeah. Marianne's but I, it was I, there I for it was a long kind of a time. Hole in the wall. Yeah, I thought yeah, it was kind totally. of a whole But anyway, so they go out. Look at, so two o'clock in the morning. All of a sudden, I hear it, the the keys in the door, like cheek, 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 and I hear this giggling, like hee hee hee. And I'm like, <laughs> I open up the door, and Donna's trying. She has the keys. She's like, oh hi, and and Sherry like says, don't kill me, don't kill me. I'm so sorry. And I was like, I was like, what the hell? Is that? She's like, your wife is a maverick. And I was like, they all both came in. Donna, went, I put it, put it in bed. Wake up the next day. Um, she, Donna is laid out like she can't move, and, and I'm like, "Baby, okay?" She's like, "Oh, don't talk, don't talk, don't talk." I come out. Sherry's got a cup of coffee in her hand. She's got a cigarette. She's like, "Good morning," and I'm like, <laughs> "Like you look at just just starting out on the journey, uh, right straight in with mom and everything." And I I laughed to my. I filmed it. I'm a terrible person. I filmed it because I thought it was absolutely terrible. Never shown it to anybody. It's in the archives wherever we got it buried. But it was, it was the most hysterical moment. Uh, and Donna was just like, she's told me, they told me that they met up with these German guys and went shooting pool in the middle of the night. And Donna grew up in Germany and, and she started, she hadn't spoken German forever. She starts speaking fluent German and she was like, I know you spoke German like they're having they had a great time anyway. But that show, that. Jerry was just you know just the greatest. That's a great story. Loved her, loved, loved, loved her. Amelia, a lot of fans are asking about working with Vince and Monty and Nia. Can you share memories? Um, I absolutely adored working with all three of them. Um, you know the relationship with 
Vince and with Hamp were, were stupendous. Um, it's interesting. I, I, you know, think about that relationship. Oh, I know why I was thinking about it. Um, uh, football player, Gail Sayer, who passed oh, away yes. recently. He was, um, he was invited with another football player that I can't think he, these professional football players were invited to the Hamp Jilly wedding. Oh, and I, oh, you wow. know, All right. it, 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 it really impressed me so much because a guiding light pulled out all the stops for the Hamp Jilly wedding. They did. But when I saw that they brought in these professional guys and, and, you know, all the men on, on the floor knew who they were. And I was like, okay, yes, okay. I know exactly who Gail say. Yes, I'm shaking hands, not knowing these people at all. Cause I don't know. <laughs> he was actor. He was in Brian song. Brian song. That's, that's the only reason I knew his story was because of Brian right. song. You know, I didn't know him as an athlete, but I, I just remember this week, I was like, oh my God, how, how wonderful that was to just, be in his presence just for just a little while and to get to to meet him. Um, and I know Vince was over the moon with these professional um, athletes. Um, I, and I, was Roberta, Roberta Flack at your wedding? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the days when we could afford. Exactly. Yeah. That was like the, and, you know, going back to your original story, you know, what we were talking about before, of, you know, being shy of the inter interracial, but what Guiding Light chose to do with the Hamp and Jilly story and bringing on family members one after the other was absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely yeah. um if I could have imagined something for myself, I never would have dreamed that big. And, you know, people of our age, <coughs> <laughs> Roberta Flack was a huge get. And, um, you know, I remember calling home going, guess who's gonna sing at my wedding? Guess who's gonna sing at my wedding? Uh, everybody was blown away. So absolutely, I, uh, it was a fairy tale. A lot of it was a fairy tale. Um, yeah, I, mean, I mean, your whole family was built around you, you know? And then, you know, they really, they might have shied away, like you said, from Rick, but they really didn't shy away. Like you, there were so many black folks yeah. on our show at that period of time. It was so, uh, you know, real life, beautiful. You it, know, beautiful it really to see. Was. It really was. It wasn't just, you know, a boyfriend. There was a mother, a father, and a brother. There was an entire yeah. family unit. And then a stepfather, and then a father that, okay, we won't even get into that crazy storyline, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> that you almost slept with your, your yeah, father? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that, you know, that they... <laughs> But that's Sorry, don't, Sorry, don't you laugh too hard. You've had some killers too. I, I feel I am <laughs> Oh, but yeah, I, I, I love it. The rapist was the really, the, the, that, that pushed me over the edge. I, I said, I can't, I can't bend this way anymore. Uh, it was when I had to fall in love with the the son of Roger Sebastian. Oh yeah, Doug. Uh, Doug. I can't, can't think of his last name. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, how about how about you know the nursery rhyme? Yes, that was particularly embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, I, of course, Crazy. I was on drugs at the time, so I mean, anything is explainable. Right. Doug. Doug they Hutch was to the children in their hot cocoa. Wasn't Santa Claus yeah. involved in that somehow? It was Christmas. It was Christmas. It, uh, yeah, that was. But awesome. I mean, these are the bar people. I hated that how, story. Feeling crack. How do you do? You know, how do you take it and then you know for yourself make it work? I think you're just so right. getting the script, learning the words, and standing up there and saying them. You just do anything. And it, I mean, I don't think that was my best work in, in the, <laughs> when I found <laughs> I was the um, nursery rhyme stalker. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was wondering, who is that going to be? Oh, God, who's going to get that story? Because they built it up for so long with, with mm. the gloved hand. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's interesting how how a show can, how any show, I, I'm not, you know, pinpointing Guiding Light because, you know, for as many great stories as Guiding Light told, there is bound to be things. But it's interesting where they could think to do that with a character that people love so much like Holly. It's just surprising sometimes to see the direction on, on any show. I'm, you know, like I said, it's I, not just kind of. I think they just took pleasure in bending me and contorting <laughs> <laughs> different shapes. <laughs> that, yeah, the worst thing that can happen in a writer's meeting is, what if? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it, I mean, it was all fun and, and, and challenging. But, you know, of course, some stories you relate to more than other. And when it's just simple relations, I mean, like the Roger uh, story was just so wonderful to play because it had so many layers of love and hate and all that goes between. So it was yeah. delicious to mine that. Well, I mean, that that is such a um, rich in history story mm -hmm. roger and holly but and it amazes me because i was thinking about it as we were getting ready for this though i mean you know he raped holly but people still loved roger thor you know and loved roger and holly together so interesting to see how the the writing the performances can make us still love a character that is so bad you know yeah i think she had a, um or i like to play it that she had such a deep connection with him that she understood all of his uh his his flaws and and she felt in a way because she had lived them with lived through them with him in their youth that there was always that connection there that that couldn't be severed no matter what happened. Mm -hmm. Can you all share? Because you've all spent time working with Michael. You, Rick, you had a great story last time. What was that story? Oh, my first day with Michael. My first day, well, my first day uh, at large with, with more than um, a, a jailer. I was thrown in you know, some pit, some jail. Um, Cause Carl, Carl was gone and I had to come in and they had to introduce me and whatnot. But um, my first real, I considered my first real day um, was with Michael and playing obviously Blake's husband and his son-in-law. Well, I happened to, well, before I came to the show, um, I was, um, yeah, this is great. I was on days, and, yeah, I was on days and, and I, I was let go from days and two weeks later, I, I was getting married, so I'm freaking out. I don't know. I'm screen testing for three different shows. I'm screen testing for General Hospital, screen testing for As the World Turns, I'm screen testing for Guiding Light. And I go, I, I'm, I'm wanting, just because of where I lived in L.A., so I was like, I want to stay in L.A. I hope I get General Hospital. But the character wasn't as fun as the As the World Turns and uh, Guiding Light characters. So I did that, got it done, flew out, and I believe the same trip for both did it, got the, got the, got the role so for, with Johnny, uh, Johnny Light. And then, so I go off on my honeymoon. I got the job. Yay, everything's cool. I go to, go to France. I won this trip with my wife on some sort of promotional deal. So we're in, we're in Paris. We, we're in this little hotel called uh, 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 Hotel uh, Rue, um, Rue de saint Gregory. I read French, sucks. Um, but they had been owned. But the hotel it was a beautiful little boutique hotel. But they owned a restaurant ca called Cafe La Maroc, right on the corner. So, as every American, I, we go out there at eight o'clock when the Parisians are there at ten, ten thirty, and all. Um, so we go in there, Don and I, and we start eating. It's three courses. We're having a lot of wine, drinks, and whatnot. And you know, we're feeling no pain and really happy and enjoying ourselves. People are piling in and so forth. So now it's a busy restaurant, and all of a sudden, we're we're kind of in dessert. And Donna is here. I'm here. So looking over over my shoulder, she looks and she goes, "Hey, I think that's Michael Zaslow." 
I went. I turn around. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I said, it is. <laughs> she's like, she goes, she goes, you're going to be working with him. He's like, go say hi. And I was like, I'm going to say hi. No, it's ridiculous. I'm like, you know, he's enjoying himself. It's like, what is something? She's like, oh, go say hi. And I was like, so I sauntered on over there. Michael's back to me. Michael's back is to me. And Susan, his wife, is, is seated. Susan sees in her eyes like, oh, somebody recognized you. I come walking <laughs> up. <laughs> and I said, excuse me, Mr. Zaslow. He still hasn't turned around yet. So I said, excuse me, Mr. Zaslow. Worst thing I probably could have said was, I'm not a fan. <laughs> but <laughs> I said, my name's Rick Hurst. I said, I'm going to be playing Alan Michael Spaulding and your, your son-in-law on the show. Michael no sooner heard that, snapped his head around. He was like, oh, my God. He goes, what are you doing here? And I, and I said, I, I'm here on my honeymoon. I just got married. That's my wife over there, Donna. My wife, Donna's over there, like, you know, going, ah! You know, way and 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 uh, he says, "Oh my God, what a, what a what a coincidence!" He says, "He says, please sit down. You know, come let's let's. I'd love to have dinner with you and chat and whatnot." And let's have, I said, "Michael, I would." I said, "We've literally been here for three almost three hours." I said, "And we've had our fill." I said, "We're just going to go back." I said, "I just want to come over and, and, and introduce myself and say I'm really excited to be Great, good, boom, right? See you back in the states. Fast forward, we come back from honeymoon. I've gone through a couple of days of getting like my first scenes. Here I am with Michael. Now, when I was in Days of Our Lives, I uh, they, they had that's they used to do cue cards. Not something I I really even wanted it to entertain. But back in that day, it was a little bit more common. Um, Matt Carey, Francis uh, Reed, they they were they very much used cards, and I was in a lot of scenes with them. So invariably, I would see scene, I would see my lines on there, and you just can't help but go. Shit, I don't want to look at that. It's like staring at my script. I don't want to do that. But invariably, I kind of got used to it. I start my first day with Michael is thirteen scenes, and which is you know par for the course, right, guys? You know, at that time. So what? Thirteen scenes, big effing deal. Me a bag of shells. Let's do that. Well, I'm nervous because this is the first time I'm working with Michael. He's a big deal. Everybody think Sherry was in the scene. A lot of folks were in the scene. I can't remember. I don't even know if if. Um, or he was in the scene or anything, but there were a lot of folks in the scene, and I'm supposed to walk in. It's like, oh, I love Michael's home kind of thing. And I'm looking around. I'm going, I said, um, hey, Michael, um, do, do, uh, do you guys use cue cards? And he just looked at me and he goes, no. And I said, I said, oh, I said, oh, okay, cool, no problem. But I said, uh, so what if you, now mind you, I've studied, but I'm still like nervous. And he goes, I said, what if you, what if, you know, what if you go up? And he goes, wing it. All of a sudden you hear a lock. Five, four, three. <laughs> and we walk. I never again would have asked the question, where are the cue cards? Because that, that should have been it. And I have Michael to thank for it. So that was my story, <laughs> my, my story with Michael. I love um, that story, though. I mean, yeah, I like random, that. around the world. You're completely random. Some, completely random. You know, in a restaurant. Amelia, what do you remember about Michael? Pretty much the same thing. Um, Michael <laughs> said, bring your A game. No, you're not going to get cue cards. But what, what I love about, um, Michael was it, it, you know, again, for me, it was a coaching experience every time I got to work with him. If he really thought I was a little bit off the rails, he would make, he would give me a couple of quiet words and then I'd go, Oh, let's shape this a little bit differently. He was very generous in that. I never felt like he was, um, patronizing me or anything like that. But, you know, for a young, inexperienced actress, oh. it was a gift. And so like, like a word, like he just gave you a word, like a suggestion or something? Yeah, it would be a gentle, a gentle suggestion, a gentle nudge. Yeah. Um, you know, it might be a, a question. What do you think about, you know, when just, and that was my hint, let's rethink this. He's not telling me what to do. He's not giving me a line reading. He said, what do you, what do you think? Which would always bring me back to let's, let's look at the different ways that I can shape this. Yeah. That's inclusive too. It's a mm -hmm. question. rather. Than, it's, than generous. It's, it's generous yeah. too. Like you said, I mean, to my God, to be green and to have somebody who, who has been around to, right. to share, share that right. knowledge. It's powerful. Right. It, it, my it's favorite thing though, my favorite thing about Michael, though, is when when he took his ninja scenes very, very seriously, right? Where he, like the whole thing with like it, like 
you know, Roger's a Roger's a ninja. You know, Roger's like knows martial arts and all this kind of stuff. And he took he always had it with a sword and whatnot. And poor right. Michael, he had like double knee surgery. The poor guy could like he would walk like very measured, like if you do it. But you know, Eddie always used to get Peter Simon, God bless him, used to bust his stones on that all the time. He's like, oh, it's like, oh the ninja's here. Like, oh my God, I'm gonna laugh sometimes. That's the and he took it in stride too. He totally took, see that was Michael. Michael was Michael was very serious about what he what mattered to him, and he was very like stayed so tight to his character that way. Yeah. But you know, every now and then, if you gave him a little one of these, he was totally cool with it. He was totally because he could give way much as good as he, as he got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, to really think of like you, you mentioned, Sherry, you know, we mentioned Sherry coming out of college, and Amelia, you said you were green. Like to to walk into that place. You know, work with Maureen and and Michael Zaslo and all Peter Simon and all these people. It is like you know the the best schooling you could ever imagine. Yeah, you can't buy it. You can't <laughs> yeah. buy it. Um, even and and Maureen and Rick, you can help me out. We had um, <laughs> our senior statesman on the show, and I'm blanking on the character names right now. The grand Rourke or. Bill Rourke H- or H B or H3. Henry Chamberlain. Yes. Larry. Yes. Or, or Larry Gates. Larry, Larry Gates. Gates. Oh my oh, God. Yes. I could on those long wedding days, I could sit at their feet and listen to those stories for hours. And sometimes I had the you know ability to do that on a wedding day. They were rich and delicious and amazing actors. And it just, you know, you can't buy that sort of theatrical history because they would talk about their stage work and you can't, you, it just, just to observe and just be able to glean everything. It's just grad school. Let's just call it grad school. Larry, Larry, Larry. Like telling jokes. Larry, Larry told the best jokes. Didn't he? Didn't he? Uh, the, those no, Bill Rorick would talk about Tallulah. <laughs> it was marvelous. Like, so yeah, it was. It was. It was a lesson in, in theater history to listen to him. And he was such a gen- like everything about like you know Bill Rorick was like the, the way they dressed him. That's normally yes. how he was. He right. was a scarf man. Yes. Like he was. You know, he was going to twenty one. You know, after he would like, oh, I'm 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 going you know, darling, and I'm going down to to twenty one this evening. Would you care to come with me, that Jack? It's like, uh, okay, you know. Ma- Maureen, when you joined, who was that for you? I guess it was uh, Charita and Barbara Berger, my mother. Yeah. Um, yeah, they were like the, uh, you know, the mentors that would show me around and get, I mean, it was, I had just come to New York. I had never worked in front of camera before. And all I, when that camera would come on and, and turn toward me, it felt, it reminded me of the dental <laughs> drill. It was a dental <laughs> coming at me, you know. And, and I, I, I to relaxed and to breathe. So, That's great. That was rough. Can you share memories of Santo Domingo, that remote? Oh, gosh, yes. Um, we were filming in a place called, I think, Tres Ojos, and it was three holes down in the, below the surface of the ground, caverns. And there were all these little stairs okay. cut into the stone, going all the way down into there. And that's where we filmed the, in the boat, in the lagoon, and, and uh, you know, me at gun, with the gun all the yeah. way. That was like, uh, and of course we're definitely that just looked that just looked like the scene. <laughs> <laughs> and, <clears throat> so we're de- we're filming that, and of course I got Montezuma's revenge down there, oh, and yeah. so I would have to say it was Michael Bleone, uh, director, and I'd have to say, "Oh, I gotta go, I gotta go." <laughs> and then I gotta go. <laughs> Literally. Uh, all those stairs, little stairs, hundreds of stairs to get to the top. And it was a oh, tour right. So at the top, they were holding all the people back were the little uh, bathrooms where you could go in. <laughs> and uh, so I make it. I just make it into the stall. And it's just a tiny little door, you know, this big, swinging across. And I get in there and I'm holding myself up on the wall because it's just a hole in the ground. And all of a sudden, somebody's knocking on the door saying, 
hey, excuse me, are, aren't you Holly? Uh, yeah. <laughs> For everything that was going on, and I'm just going, just a minute, just a minute. <laughs> I'll be right out. <laughs> that has got to be the worst. <laughs> that was awful. Oh my, that is awful. I mean, just to get that when you're on vacation, let alone when you're working with 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 you know a crew of a hundred people. And sorry, gotta run. <laughs> But uh, that I had such good time. Worst, really worst fan interaction. Movie. Amelia, worst fan interaction. It would be something similar, except not Montezuma's. Or, there's nothing like coming out of a stall and see some, you know, and there's someone waiting for you. Hi. <laughs> You're like, can I wash my hands first, please? <laughs> I had yeah, one in funny. a diner. Yeah. I had one in a diner uh, in New York. Maureen, one of our fans, Kimberly, just said that those scenes are some of her first television memories. Wow. Oh, yeah. good. Even though it was very six story, but uh, yeah, I know. Uh, six six memories. I, yeah, exactly. That is so funny. Um, Amelia, I know when you joined us for the Bauer barbecue, we talked about the Black Lives Matter movement. And I just wanted, you know, you and I were talking on the phone. Um, you know, so much has happened even since we had that yes. Bauer barbecue. Um, so much. Feel so much. I mean, right. That was the end of June. It, it's crazy to think that George Floyd was in May and then all of this other, um, all these other incidences. Do you feel the country's headed in the right direction? Um, it, it, this, you know, every day there's a new news brief there's something new that happens i think so many of us were dismayed that trump was not an, was not able to condone white supremacy during that debate i i can think of no excuse for him not to just simply say yes absolutely in that moment not days later but in that very moment to say absolutely I, that's not to be tolerated in America. And yet what we have seen is the empowerment of people who do believe in white supremacy. And we've only seen it grow since the Bauer barbecue. It's frightening um, to see where we are right now. And as we said at the Bauer barbecue, we must vote. We must vote not with our pocketbooks. And yes, you do need to fund all the different campaigns, but we have to vote with our hearts and our consciousness. This is not who America is. And we can't yeah. go back to that yeah, old can, America. Right, we, we cannot go back, we must go forward. Um, can you tell the story about your son? Your son's 22 now. Yes. Oh my God. And 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 share that story again oh. about the, back, the backpack. Yes. Um, you know, as we said, um, parents of color sit our children down, especially our male children, and we talk to them about successful ways of interfacing with the police. And I preach this from an early age. Yes, sir. No sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am, in order to decelerate any, any, anything that might be happening. So my son is coming home from college after his first year of college and um, he took the subway down. We were still living in California. He took the subway down to his high school because you know, your first year in college, I'm gonna go back and be big man on campus. And he's walking the last few blocks to the campus and he's got um, headphone and he's got backpack and black shorts and some sort of shirt. He um, walks directly in front of the high school and he hears behind him the siren. But he's not thinking it's for him, but he turns because he's hearing a siren. Maybe he needs to move out of the way. He's on the sidewalk. The police stop in front of him as he's turned around and get out of the car and approach him. And immediately he's like, what could, you know, what could this be? He's in front of the high school. They explain that he fits the profile 
of someone they're looking for in the neighborhood who had on the black shorts and the headsets, you know, he's listening to the music in a backpack. And um, they haven't emptied his pockets. They take the backpack, they handcuff him and put him in the back of the squad car. So during this whole thing, he said, mom, I just kept thinking of your words over and over and over. And so they take everything out and they're going through his wallet and they're going through the backpack and they pull out his laptop, which has a Princeton sticker pasted on the front. And so he'd already said, I'm in college and this is my high school. I go, you go to Princeton? He goes, well, yes. He goes, oh. So now they've, they've already called his name in or done whatever they're doing the research. Like, oh, I guess you really can't be the person we're looking for. And in that moment, he said, he was thinking, I'm so glad that they realized I'm not this person. But after he thought, a, a Princeton sticker shouldn't save me. A Princeton sticker is not, should not be my free pass. I didn't do anything yet. How quickly that could have gone south on him. Mm. Had he not something that they thought made him better than maybe the, the next African-American young male. So it, it, it was very impactful for him. It continues to be um, something that we have continued to talk about as we see so many incidents that are happening with the camera now that we've got the police cams that we can pull up and say, hey, no, that didn't have to go down like that. Uh -huh. um, I didn't expect for this to happen to my 19 year old and I'm sure other mothers have not expected or prayed that it wouldn't happen to them but you know, it's just it's I I, I I'm smiling, it, it, but crying sometimes. No, I, I understand. And you know, Rick, I mean, you have you have children. Like I, I don't have children, but I just can't. Like that's not something you have ever to have in your mind about your children. You have other worries for your children, but like it's just and and what really does it for me is that it's. 2020 goddamn it excuse my expression it's 2020 you know like you know yeah you know it, I, it, I, it, it, I, it's I mean, not should not be what's happening in 2020. no it, sh it shouldn't and you know and, and amelia i'm i am i am so sorry that your son had to experience that um you said something before and and it's and it really it bothers me it really bothers me because I, uh, I have I have boys who are very you know progressively active. Um, you know Nick Nick goes down to protests. Nick, Nick gets in. You know, um, and he's he's sort of I keep telling him you need to become an activist because you 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 hear you absorb and you you can communicate. I said that's that's what needs to happen. Um, mm -hmm. You know anybody who's around him nobody's like oh get that guy away from me. He's just anyway. My point is that. Um, the unfortunate thing uh, I, I feel, Amelia, is that um, that it is unfortunately who a large swath of this country is, and it always has been, and it's just it's been given credence, um, right. and that's for that. I, for that, I, Permit, I, I, permission. I, I, I don't like saying that, but that's you know that's the unfortunate thing. Like every time we see things like this happen. Um, whether it's with your son, whether it's any other African American male, female, whoever, um, it, it becomes like, oh, that. Even though I may, Reen may, Alan may have an empathy there for that plight, there's no way that any of us can 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 know what that feels like, and that could have gone down even worse for you, right. unfortunately. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And yeah. but but the 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 ability for more people like ourselves to to not go, oh, I don't want to have that conversation. No, gotta have that conversation. You gotta have that conversation. You gotta be willing to say, 
Yeah, uh, well, that's not everybody. Oh, those are just kind of a few bad apples. Eh, you know what? There's more bad apple than not. And if you don't call out the fact that it even exists, then it just continues. And then credence gets gets given. And like, oh, you know, oh, my friend's not that racist. <laughs> There's a little bit <laughs> racist, you know. No. So, you know, it's no. just. But it's, but the but the but the idea is that that we keep in our in our hearts and our minds and our in our actions that it is. No, this isn't okay. I don't care what you say. It's not okay. You you want to show up at a polling place with a gun and say, "No, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that you don't get." No, 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 no. That's not okay. That's not okay. Go away. Go away. Go no. back on the hole you came from. No way. Right. And I I, yeah. I I do believe that that we have to be proactive as we you know again you know we had more information last night. What is this going to do? The one a.m. Um, tweet about our president. Um, what is this going to do? What impact that will this have on the election? We don't know right now. But what I do know is that if the governor of the state of Texas decides that there can only be one dropping box for one. The, a county, yeah. Harris County. Yeah. That's as big as Rhode Island. Clearly yeah. voter suppression. Yeah. You, you know, the, you cannot excuse it. And I live uh, in the state of voter suppression. I live in Georgia. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah, it's it's it was it's it's refined here. It is very. Uh, refined. You're, They've been doing it you're, so you're, long that they know how to do it really well. Yeah, your I governor was suing. My, my yeah, your governor was suing your mayor, which was ridiculous. Right. <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Ridiculous. What the fuck is that? It's like. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, well, I haven't received my. Uh, my, my me and Donna, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Maureen. You want to stop? I'm, I'm just going to say, Georgia, Georgia has a chance of. Swinging blue. Uh, I live in a county. I live in uh, Cobb County, which is just outside. And and for a very long time, Cobb County was very wet. Um, Cobb County is now. I, it's probably the most diverse um, uh, county in in all of the Atlanta counties around that that I live in. And it is blue. Cobb County is blue. Um, and it, yeah, is there a chance? Sure, but these are. The state legislature here is crafty as hell. They they got shit that they, it's a good old boy network. Yeah. And they like to they they want to keep things a certain way. Like I said, it's like, oh, out in front, we're all we're all inclusive here. But right in the back door there, you know, you know ain't none of them in here. Yeah. And and I, and I I beg anyone who's listening, I, you know, I I didn't want to necessarily get political. I, I want to talk about this because I think it's important. I also beg anybody that is listening and watching that you always um, get more than one news source. Try to get mm -hmm. the facts. Just mm -hmm. Don't believe one yeah. because whatever that one is might be biased and you, sh mm -hmm. you should just for yourself be much more well-informed than that. Yeah. And that's, you know, kind of, um, I think, where I'll leave that, but I think that's important. You for can weave through the part that becomes, yeah, the, and you can weave through the part that becomes promotion for a network or a or a news source to gain more subscribers, viewers, what have you. But but the facts, be, when the facts literally drop in to be exactly the same everywhere you look, don't ignore it. Correct. Don't ignore it. Perfect. Yeah. Maureen, I wanted to ask you, did you know that Claire Labine Oops, we lost our host. We hey, lost our host. Hey, <laughs> oh, it. It. No. It's our show now, ladies. Let's make it happen. <laughs> what was he going to ask me about Claire Levine? I, I don't know. know. Let's, let's uh, do it. <laughs> uh, we were going to take over, Alan. Yeah, no, good. I'm glad you were. I hit the wrong <laughs> thing, so I ha hadn't had that. Did you know that Claire Levine um, and Jill wanted to write a story for you to pair you with Crystal Chappelle at one time? Oh, well, I got an inkling of that when I saw a scene that we did together that with, where we had facials. Um, <coughs> um, but no, I wasn't really in on that. I, I didn't know. But I had earlier gone to Claire Levine and to say, um, how about doing the children's hour, you know, where you would have two women uh, coming together, nothing explicit, but you would tell the story through all the, the, the community, the rumors spreading and how people would oh. deal. With that. 
But it was, uh, it, you know, this was still in the days of P and G having an iron fist on things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yep. Mm -hmm. That was a subject that sadly was taboo as well. Oh, but you, you I love that. <laughs> yeah, it would have been a great story. Um, and you personally came out in 2012. What, um, what at that time, you know, prompted you to? Well, I was uh, largely off the show then, and I was just doing an interview. I think it was one of these um, whatever happened to kind of story. Uh, this, this young reporter, uh, Stella Cadente, was doing it. And then in the course of it, you know, I'm telling her about my life. And she reacted so strongly and said, oh, my God, you're coming out. Can I use this? And at that point, I said, yeah, who cares? Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, so then, and she did it for a different magazine, I don't remember, but it then was picked up by the international coming out uh, issue of uh, Out Magazine. So then I, I made this be in my, you know, late in my career, I, I made this, um, this big announcement. But, you know, you have to understand, Growing up when I did, being in the closet was just kind of dyed in the wool. You just did it, you know. I, I lived my private, my personal life, and by daytime, I uh, played a straight woman on TV, you know. Uh, it, was, it was not a big deal. I once went, uh, had a meeting with um, Roush, and he asked me, uh, he said, you know, we need, we need you got to do some more publicity. And I said, well, how about I talk about my personal life? And he said, no, absolutely not. <laughs> and he was not homophobic. And he was a very uh, no. intelligent, uh, cultured New Yorker. Uh, yeah, so it, totally. he was working for, for them. Mm -hmm. and, then, yeah. and that was the party line then. Um, yeah. It's so great that it changed with Crystal and those, the following stories that came after I left. But in my time, it was still way too early for that. Yeah, I mean, I, I came out after you or before you, but I, I was gay, you know, later. Um, but it's interesting because, I mean, there was nothing on television like when you or I, you know, um, you know, I don't know what year the show Glee came out, but, you know, I was probably already in my 40s and I watched it from beginning to end because I just loved that there was this show. And it, 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 it wasn't as good from when it started, but I was committed to staying with it because I loved what it represented for young kids that they had something to, you know, I mean, Maureen, you and I had no role models or anything that you could see. Exactly. It was too. It was uh, just a whole, whole different world. I, I'm so happy for young people now. I mean, in a lot of places, it's still uh, terribly difficult, but uh, they have yeah. so many role models, and it's just it's so easy to be fluid, as they say. It's it's not my my, my son, my Maureen, my son Cameron, my youngest, came out when he was 13. Oh that's wow, great. that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, and that's that's. You, you both, you and Alan saying that, I just, I think to myself, oh my God, that's true. You know, it's like to, to say like a 13 year old came out and you're like, what? That that would have yeah. never happened. I, and I, I, I mean, I had, I had dear friends that were, that couldn't, couldn't come out. 13 just blows my mind. I mean, I knew I, you know, my mother asked me at, yeah. at around 21, but I really didn't tell a lot of friends, I think until 30. You know, yeah. like it just still, I was mm -hmm. petrified to say it for whatever, you know, for fear of losing them, which I think we all in that which position. Is so, yeah, which is so strange, especially in our in our in our business. It's like, yeah, you know, it's not like it's it's. Well, I guess we feel so much more for it. <laughs> Get the phone, Rick. Some fans were asking, would you ever go back to General Hospital? Uh, um, you know, I I, I always say I. I I never say never, uh, but you know, um, nobody's really calling. Sure, yeah, if you if you if they call, that that's uh, that's fine. Um, you know, it's like I said when I when I left Guiding Light. You know, there there were there were there are seasons. I kind of look at everything for me. It's like there's seasons in my life that I'm where I'm supposed to be for the time that I am, 
and I don't know if if uh, if you know that's something that will come back around. Um, it's been I, I I haven't been around there since 2016, you know, and that's when I actually moved from LA to Atlanta. Um, but last words that I had were like, hey, if you want to bring me back, at least make it a couple of days because I got to fly myself. Um, but yeah, of course, of course, you know, when there's work, if depending upon now I can say this older, um, depending upon what what's available, um, uh, where what what literally what my schedule is. I mean, I have a whole business here with my family, um, and it and it does it demands a lot of my time. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think we said it today. We said it the other day, but it's Nana's Kitchen, right? Yeah, Nona, Nona, Nona's, Nona's Nona. Family Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Nona's family kitchen. And mom's Nona. Mom's Nona. Um, one of the fans, Matthew, said he can't go back to Young and the Restless. He got killed off there. I think Michael Zaslow proves. I think Michael Zaslow proves that a little wrong. I think. You yeah, you can, go back. you can always go home. <laughs> How many times did Roger die? I mean, probably <laughs> ten. Probably twice. 10. Oh, more than two. Really? Oh, more than twice, I would think. Yes. Yeah. Somebody, somebody will tell us. Amelia, a lot of fans were asking if you can share some memories of your time on Passions. <laughs> so some, some big passion fans are, are tuning in. Oh, my God. Um, I miss my Passions family as well. Um, I was listening to Maureen earlier talking about storylines that are challenging for different reasons because you're you're not playing a character that that is as close to yourself and maybe it's a, you're, it's a little bit of a stretch. So Passions was definitely my stretch. I really enjoyed playing this evil um, <laughs> villain. Um, I've never been cast as that ever in my life. It was always girl next door and that kind of, you know, career woman and um, uh, vindictive and conniving. And it was just a huge amount of fun to play. And, um, you know, certainly after being a New Yorker for so long, California and that whole studio system was so very different than what I was, so it was a little bit of a learning curve there, but I love it, I loved it. And um, Tracy Ross and I are still dear friends and- um, Oh good, somebody, somebody was asking about that. Um, Rick and Amelia, I would, I would assume that your dressing rooms at General Hospital and Passions were just a little bigger than those at Guiding Light. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Oh, my God! That was, that was hey, I shared I shared twenty two with Mark Derwin, and that was a freaking oh. talk about. It. Oh my God! Yeah, but that that must have been a riot. You gotta go outside and change you. your mind. <laughs> What's that? That must have been a riot, the two of you. Oh my God! Oh yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. God! I would have. Like, my like, when you're that. putting on your pants, like because see, Mark Mark had to put on, you know. The, the working class guy stuff, oh, some jeans, boots, and a jacket, oh, I'm done, boom, he's out, you know? Me, I'm like, I gotta put on nice. Oh, and back in the day when we did suspenders, and then I gotta put on that big double breast yeah. coat, and a tie, and a tie the tie. Arlene, Arlene demanded, she was, she was the wardrobe mistress. Oh, God. Arlene demanded, if you came on as a young actor and you had the absolute stones to leave your stuff <laughs> scantily thrown onto your freaking hanger, she would burn you with the cigarette that was constantly <laughs> laying out of the mouth. Without That's a doubt. So, Without a doubt. That is so funny. Yeah. Oh my yep. God, you three, this has been fantastic. Yes. Really? I'd love, it's so nice I'd to love see that. you guys. It's so yeah. nice. Right. Just, you, you all do look exactly the same. It is crazy. Aww. Looking at the screen. <laughs> Looking at the screen. <laughs> stay here. Stay here as I sign off because we'll talk backstage for a minute. Everybody, thanks for sure. tuming in today. Have a great thanks for, weekend. Thanks for coming out, guys. Bye bye. Have a good weekend. Oops. <laughs>